On-device machine learning is surprisingly easy to do thanks to two Apple frameworks, CoreML and CreateML. CoreML lets us use machine learning models in our app to make predictions. And CreateML lets us create custom machine learning models with our own data, even including a wholly bespoke app called CreateML that makes the whole process as easy as drag and drop. As a result, it's now within the reach of anyone to add machine learning to their app. Now, CoreML is able to handle a range of different kinds of training tasks like recognizing images or sounds or even motion. But in this instance, we're going to use a thing called tabular regression, which is a very fancy name and machine learning people love fancy names. What it means is we can simply throw a whole bunch of spreadsheet data at CreateML and ask it to figure out the relationship between various values for us. Now, machine learning is done in two steps. Step one, we train the model with CreateML. And step two, we and then ask the model to make predictions with CoreML. Training is the process of saying to the computer, please look at all these values we have and figure out how they relate to each other so you can make predictions. In large data sets, this might take a long time, potentially hours or even longer. But then once it's done, prediction is done on device. We feed it the trained, finished model and it'll use all its previous results to make estimates about new data it hasn't seen before. Let's start the training process now. I want you to launch the Create ML Mac on, uh, app on your Mac. Um, if you don't know where it is, that's fine. You can go to the Xcode menu, then choose Open Developer Tool, then select Create ML from here, and that'll launch Create ML. And the first thing it'll do is say, do you wanna make a new document or open an existing one? Please choose new document here and ask you to make a template. And there's a whole bunch of these to work from. You can see sound, object, style transfer, da, da, da. It's very powerful. We wanna choose tabular regression. Then press next, give it a name. For example, I'll call mine better rest. Uh, enter your name for the author, of course. Then press next and create, save your desktop. And this is where create a mail can seem a bit tricky at first, because you'll see a whole bunch of options on the screen Really though, I'll walk you through it all. It won't seem so hard at all. The first step is to provide CreateML with some training data. This is the raw statistics for it to look at, which in our case, this is the four values. When someone wants to wake up, how much sleep they thought they needed on average, how much coffee they drink per day, and therefore how much sleep they actually need to feel rested. I provide this for you in a file called betterrest.csv. It's in that massive GitHub repository you should have downloaded already under the project files for this project. Grab that now. So in CreateML, under Data, Training Data, press this Choose button and then press Select. Now select betterrest.csv and choose Open. This CSV comma separated values file contains sample data just for the purpose of this project Please don't use it for actual health-related work. It's just sample data. The next job is to choose this target down here, which is the value we want the computer to learn to predict. And also the features. The features are things it should take into account. Other values we think will add up somehow to produce the target value. For example, if we want to try and predict how much sleep someone thought he needed and how much sleep they actually needed, they could try and figure out the two and say, well, of those two, um, I think you drink this much, this much coffee. You can kind of flip it around freely if you want to. In this instance, we want the target to be actual sleep. We want the computer to learn to predict how much sleep this person needs in order to feel rested. Then press choose features. We're asking it to feed in other values that we think will help predict that actual sleep value. Which of these three do we think matters? In our case, all three matter. So I'll choose wake, estimated sleep, and coffee. All three here. Then press select. So we're saying use those three features, figure out how they relate to each other, and use that to create an actual sleep prediction. Below here is a drop down option for the algorithm. And there are five options here automatic, random forest, boosted tree, decision tree, and linear regression. Each one takes a different approach to handling our data, how I analyze the data. 
but there is helpfully this automatic option here that will attempt to choose the best algorithm for you automatically. It's not always correct. And in fact, it does limit our options somewhat dramatically, but in this project, it's more than good enough. If you do happen to want information about what these things do behind the scenes, how they work, I have a whole YouTube video just for you called Create ML for Everyone. You can see a link in the video right now. Anyway, let's get rid of that. <laughs> Over here, we're now ready with our data. And so I'm gonna press train. It's thinking about it and it's finished. That's it. It is trained after a couple of seconds perhaps, our data is pretty small to be fair, it'll complete. You'll see this nice big friendly check mark telling you everything went to plan. And to see how it went, we can go across this tab across the top here. Evaluation. It's asking us to think of the data and how well it did compared to other example values. And so inside here, we can either choose some metrics to try and do testing data, or we can say, how did it actually do? In our case, I just want to see how it did. So I'll just press validation up here. And it'll tell us some information. This is, this is helpful information if you're a machine learning specialist. Um, what it's trying to tell us is the maximum error, the furthest it was off was 681. And the root mean square error, the average it was off was 173. What this means is, it's measured in seconds here, it's able to, to estimate the accurate sleep time, how much per sleep this person needs, with an error about 173.73 seconds, which is less than three minutes of mistake. So it's figured out very, very closely how to predict someone's estimated sleep. Now there are a whole bunch of stats here you can look at. You've got training here, you've got validation, and you've got testing data here. Testing we aren't actually gonna use because we have other options here. It, it can split data up for us, which is being very helpful. We provide training data, this big CSV file. It produced validation data for us. You can see it says, it says auto sampled here. We gave it all that big CSV file saying, here's a bunch of numbers again, 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 again. It took some automatically out and said, I'll use that to check how well it did. So it can validate its results along the way and do little course corrections as it progresses. Testing data, if we use it, can be added later on. Like now you've finished the model, here's some other data to see how good you are. Really new stuff you haven't seen before at all. Anyway, at this point, you wanna to go to the output tab over here. And this is our finished model. And you can see um, it has a size of 545 bytes. Like, it is tiny and if you remember, we saw briefly, the actual file was 180 kilobytes. So it's taken 180 kilobytes and boiled it down to just 545 bytes, nothing at all. Now I know that sounds tiny, like well done, that's amazing. Um, but it's worth adding that most of that is metadata, right? You know, the author name of Paul Hudson is in there plus the names of the fields, which were like actual sleep, estimated sleep, coffee, and, and wake. They're all in that 545 bytes as well. The actual amount of space taken up by the hard data, the actual uh, how to predict required sleep based on the three input variables is well under 100 bytes. Hardly anything at all. This is possible because CritML doesn't actually care what the values are doesn't care about the 180 kilobytes of input data, it only care what the relationships are. And so it just spent a couple of billion CPU cycles trying to figure out various combinations of weights for each of those input values to see which one produced the best actual sleep, the one that's closest to the values reported in our CSV file. And once it figures that out, it said, okay, this one here matches the values the best, boom, that's the algorithm. Maybe it's like, I don't know, wake time times two plus uh, estimated sleep minus coffee cups, I don't know, some little algorithm. And the result is this tiny, tiny CoreML model. Once that's done, we're now finished, I want you to press this little button here. It is a button, it doesn't look very buttony. Press this get button here, and that will export this finished thing as an ML model, a ready to go, trained, create a ML model we can use in CoreML. 
I'll name this thing Better Rest ML Model. Saved my desktop. And it's done. We can now use that in code. Now, if you want to try training again, uh, what you want to try and do is perhaps you want to experiment with various algorithms down here. You can see it's all grayed out at this point. What you want to do is right click on this model source here, then choose duplicate. And now it becomes live again to modify, 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 then press train again until you're happy with the result.